Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, my backyard here. A nice couple different setups going on, but uh, today I'm going to be focusing on the nice smoker that we have behind us here. Going to start today on our pulled pork sandwich with a little bit of a dry rub. Now, depending on how spicy, how sweet you want it, you can do all t different types of variations. For me, I like a little bit of sweet, a little bit of spice. So I'm going to put about a cup to a cup and a half of brown sugar. Use some salt and pepper. All right. I'm going to add a little paprika for a little bit of spice. If you like a lot of spice, obviously a little bit more. Open it up, kind of spread it around. A couple shakes. Same thing with the cumin. It's going to also add a little bit of a zest to it. For those that like garlic, I know I do. A little bit of that in. If you see little pieces come out that just came like that, I'm going to break it up with your fingers and spread it around just so you don't have an overwhelming garlic bite. A little bit of cayenne pepper. If you like a lot, go for it. For this one, since most of our focus is going to be on a sweeter taste, I'm just going to put a little bit in. And last but last, not least, a little bit of ginger. This one you probably want to put in your hand because ginger has a pretty strong taste. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that in. And then we want to do the coriander and the seeds of paradise mixture. For the seeds of paradise and the coriander, you're going to want to put that in a food processor because otherwise you'll have full shells when you're trying to do the dry rub. Since there's already a little bit of brown sugar in there, you're going to have a little bit of a sweeter taste. So take that into consideration when you're putting the original brown sugar in. Going to put all that in there. Give it a nice little mix. Tossing it with your hands is best. If you use a spoon, you're going to stir one general area, but when you use your hands, you're kind of getting everything in there. And now we'll do our dry rub. Right. We have a nice piece of meat here. It's not too much fat on it. When you're smoking a piece of meat, you don't want a terrible amount of fat because it's just going to burn off, so you won't have a lot left. So when you're looking for a piece of meat, Find something that doesn't have a lot of fat on it or has one section of fat that you can trim off. So I'm going to take some of this dry rub, put it right on top here. I'm just going to start rubbing it in. Don't push too hard because you don't want to ruin the meat. Just kind of move it around on top. Lightly tap it in. Make sure all of the areas are covered as much as possible. Once you've done that on one side, flip it right over to the other and do the same thing. One of the important things that you really do have to remember with a dry rub is that there's a lot of flavor in it, so don't miss the sides. Make sure that you do the same thing that you did in the top of the bottom and rub it, all in, rub it in all the way around. Make sure that everything's covered. So now that we have the dry rub on there, I'm going to put it in the smoker for probably about four and a half to five hours. With a bigger piece of meat, you always want to take that into consideration. Make sure that you put a little more time into it. But for this piece of meat, it's about five, five and a half pounds. I'm going to put it in there for probably about five hours. At the temperature that I have it right now, I have it prepped for between 260 to 280 degrees. I'm trying to do a really slow cook. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's definitely going to be worth it. All right, now that we have the meat on the smoker, I'm going to start with what I like to call a little bit of a marinade. Now, it's not a traditional marinade because normally you'd put the meat in it first. But instead, I got picked up a little bit of a spray bottle, and once we've mixed it all up, we're going to put it in here, and we're going to spray the meat with it. So I'm going to start a little orange juice. I'm using orange pineapple today. So we're going to use a, a cup of the orange pineapple. I'm going to use just about a cup of the brown sugar. put in about a fourth of a cup of lime juice. Here's the hard part. Honey. I'm going to use two tablespoons. I'm going to do my best here to try to measure it out. One of the best things you can do 
have another spoon after you measured it out. Help scoop it in. This is one of the things you don't want to mess around with. Apple cider vinegar, if you use too much, you're going to have to start over. You're not going to like it. You just want to add a splash. That's it. You use more than that, like I said, you're not going to like it. One of the last things I'm going to put in, a little bit of lime zest. So when you're doing any type of zest, make sure that you only use the green. Once you get down to the white, you want to stop because then you're going to have a really bad taste. And with something this sweet, you don't want that in there. You want to use about half of it. Kind of a rule of thumb here, at least what I use. When you start to smell it, you've used enough. You knock off what's in there, and then you just want to mix it up. Now make sure, because there's the sticky honey and the brown sugar in there, you mix everything up really well, because otherwise you're going to have solid flavors in one area and no flavors in another. Mix it up real nice. Once you feel a whisk stop sticking to the bottom, you know you have a really good mixture. All right. Once you do put it in the bottle, what you can do is about probably about every 10-15 minutes, you want to coat all sides of the meat. Make sure that you get every side because if you know it's the same thing with any type of dry rubber marinade. If you leave it in the marinade just on one side, you're gonna have one side that has all that flavor, another side that has nothing. So make sure you get everything, and once that comes off, you'll have a delicious piece of meat. Welcome back. It's been about four hours. Took the piece of meat out. We're gonna cut into it, check to see if it's done. And it looks pretty done to me. Inside's pretty white. See a nice smoke ring right around the edge there. It's a nice telltale sign. All right, just check the middle. If you have a meat thermometer, that's one way to do it. I can tell you right now, that's nice and done. So we're gonna start shredding it and putting our sandwiches together. Take a fork. You can use your hand, your other hand. Start to tear it. I'm gonna use the knife today. Work with some smaller pieces. Start to pull it. If you have another bowl lying around, it's probably the best way to do it. You'll run out of room on the cutting board. Start shredding it all. I'm just going to use my hands, make it easier on everybody. Pass the meat right on there. Take a little bit of our coleslaw that we have prepped here. Coleslaw is really easy. It's a great side dish. We're going to put it right on top. Right there, guys. Pulled pork sandwich. 